Let us pray. Let's prepare ourselves for hearing God's word. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you and thank you for this beautiful time that you have given us to come in your presence. And thank you, Lord, for the beautiful songs. And Lord, as we come before your word, Father, we pray that you may speak to each one of us. You know our needs as your coming is drawing closer. Cleanse us, Lord, with your precious word. Sanctify us. May Christ be revealed in and through us. Help us to meditate and open our understanding so that we may go into the depths of your word and hear your clear, still voice. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all glory and honor. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I praise God for this beautiful opportunity that God has given us to come once again before you all with the precious word. And last week we were meditating on the third miracle uh, that happened through uh, the prophet Elisha. How as he was uh, from Jericho, as he went to Bethel, how those little children, they were mocking him. And the servant of the Lord looked back and he cursed. And 42 little children killed by two bears. And I believe the Lord has been speaking to us how careful we have to be when we are rearing up our children. Let us make sure that they each child that the Lord has entrusted in our care is so precious. The enemy Satan will try his level best to destroy our next generation. So many parents have been crying, grieving. Now what can be done? The next generation has turned away from God. They were once small children. God entrusted them. So in these days, may the Lord help us. May the Lord help us in these evil days to take care of the children that God has entrusted us so that they too grow up in the fear of God and are a blessing. If the coming of the Lord tarries, if our time comes to depart, May the Lord help us to leave behind a next generation that's strong in the faith. Today, let's direct our attention to the fourth miracle. And the fourth miracle is mentioned in uh, 2 Kings chapter 3. But here when we look at this miracle, an entire chapter is dedicated to the fourth miracle. And the Spirit of God is describing the circumstances which, because of which this miracle is taking place. So whenever we study uh, the Word of God, when we look at the acts of God, it's very important for us to look at the circumstances, the background. That, that's the reason that this miracle is taking place. And through this miracle, God is speaking to his people. In the previous Sundays, I shared with you that prophecy itself is a miracle. And a miracle is a prophecy. So before we go into the miracle, and or if we have to understand the, the depth or the message that is conveyed through the miracle, first we need to understand the circumstances. So here in 2 Kings chapter 3, I'll read verses 1, 2, and 3. I request you to open your Bibles. 2 Kings chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, the 18th year of Jehoshaphat king of Judah, and reigned twelve years. And he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father, and like his mother, 
for he put away the image of Baal that is that his father had made nevertheless he clung to the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat who made Israel to sin he departed not from them so but before we go into this i just want to read uh, 2 kings chapter 2 verse 25 Second Kings chapter two verse twenty five, and he went from there to Mount Carmel, and from there he returned to Samaria. So, we had stopped here last time. How Elisha, the prophet, after that incident in Bethel, how he goes to Mount Carmel. Elijah at Carmel, we had already uh, studied, and here, uh, I just. pray that the lord helps us elisha is there at mount carmel what is he doing there the spirit of god has not mentioned anything it just mentions he went from bethel to mount carmel and if we go with him there that's the place where once there was a broken altar Elijah repaired that altar and then in the sight of all Israel that's why the fire the anger of God was revealed and Elisha goes there looks at all that has happened there and he's strengthened and he comes back to Samaria there are times when we go to places there are memories and those memories they speak to us those places they have a lot of things to tell us brings back a lot of memories and that helps us in our journey i again say these memories these visitations they help us a lot now here in second kings chapter 3 we see how the spirit of god is describing the situation there number 1 verse 3 chapter 3 verse 1 jehoram now this miracle is connected with the king of israel his name is jehoram who happens to be the son of ahab and he is reigning in israel and he reigned for 12 years and his reign began in the 18th year of jehoshaphat the king in judah so while jehoshaphat is ruling there reigning there here you have jehoram and jehoram reigned for 12 years that's the first introduction that the spirit of god gives concerning this king now let's move to verse 2 and he wrought evil in the sight of the lord but not like his father and like his mother for he put away the image of baal that his father had made so here there are many important things for us to learn number 1 here the scripture says and he wrought evil in the sight of the lord what do we mean what does the spirit of god mean when it says in the sight of the lord Yehoram he did evil in the sight of God that means the eyes of the lord are always watching us we are never away from god's eyesight i can hide many things from the people many people they don't know who i am many things are covered but i need to realize yes i can hide myself from people people don't know everything but there is someone beside me who has always watched everything that i do may the lord help us to understand that do we may be young or old i cannot hide from god nothing my words 
my actions, my thoughts, everything is open before the eyes of the Lord. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Now, uh, we all know there are so many places where there have been cameras installed and uh, it's written there, you are under CCTV surveillance. While driving also, when we see a camera somewhere, we slow down. That small thing somewhere, it affects my walk. Because it brings an awareness in me that I am being watched. If man can, man can do this much, what about Almighty God? We are in His presence. And the scripture, the first thing concerning this miracle, before we go into the miracle is, the Lord has been watching me. He observes all my wrongdoing. He doesn't stop. He can stop me. But as I am doing something wrong, he has been observing and is silent. The first thing I need to be aware of is, I am being watched. And who is watching me? Not an angel, but my creator, my redeemer, my father. How careful I have to be, even if no one is watching me. There is someone who is watching all my life. Everything is open before me. Are we not in his presence? Can we hear the voice of God clearly? Next, it says, He wrought evil in the sight of the Lord, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 2, but not like his father and like his mother. What does that mean? He did evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father and mother. What is the Spirit of God revealing to us concerning the sins of Jeroboam? He records. He records all my evil deeds. Number one, he saw is not just seeing. Everything is being taken into account. And what does that mean? A day will come. A day of reckoning will come because things have been recorded. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 20 verse 12. Revelation chapter 20 verse 12. We have read this portion earlier. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those books, which were written in the books according to their works. So here, we, while studying the book of Revelation, we went through this scripture. Everyone standing before the throne of God. Books are opened. That means every evil deed, every deed is, has been recorded and it's been taken into account. Dear sirs, dear friends, we don't even remember the wrongs that we do, the evil things that we do. But there is someone who is recording all of that. What makes him record all these wrongdoings? Why are you so seriously observing a life? The reason is 
man has been created in the image and likeness of God. And eternity is waiting. He has given us one life, not just to play around. Every action, every word. No one has seen. I act before the people. I'm so good. And people praise me behind the scene. Am I what I am projecting myself to be? Am I really the same one whom I am trying to project before people? Everything is being recorded. Isaiah 44, 22. Isaiah 44, 22. I request you also to open your Bibles. I have blotted out like a thick cloud thy transgressions and like a cloud thy sins. Return unto me for I have redeemed thee. I am reading this scripture once again. Isaiah 44, 12. Uh, 44, 22. Isaiah 44, 22. I have blotted out like a thick cloud thy transgressions, and like a cloud thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. What does this mean? Yes, God has observed all that I have done. He records. Here it says, Jeroboam did not do evil like his father and like his mother. Comparison is there. Everything is written. But then if I am ready to accept, repent, forsake all the evil things that I have done, there is someone beside us who is ready to blot out all that has been taken into account. Many of us are believers. Do you realize when I accepted Jesus as, when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, what did God do? Cleansed us. Washed, wiped away everything that was written against us. Now once I have come to the knowledge of Christ, how careful I have to be. How careful I have to be. In 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 3, again it says, Nevertheless, he clung to the sins of Jeroboam. He did not do sins like his father and mother, but he clung unto the sins of Jeroboam. Look at how the Spirit of God writes those things in detail. How careful I have to be. And if I repent, if I confess, if I forsake, he is faithful to wipe away everything if I truly repent. Number three, here it says, not, but not like his father and like his mother. Second Kings 3 verse 2, I am reading again. Not like his father and mother means God, he recognizes the sins that we do. In one word, the degrees. The, 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 the seriousness, what kind of an act that is. Is it like what his father and mother did? Compares. God is comparing the wrongs that I am doing. Let us stop there one moment. When an unbeliever or someone who has not known Christ, when he does those acts, he commits sin. God is also watching him. God is comparing him. Same God is comparing me also. I am someone who was once like that unbeliever. But when I came to the cross, he forgave all my sins and now, after receiving forgiveness from God, becoming a new creation, having been justified, if I still continue, 
how should heaven deal with me how should heaven deal with me yahoram he did not commit sin like his father and like his mother god compares let's turn to john chapter 19 verse 11 john chapter 19 verse 11 Jesus answered thou couldst have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above therefore he that delivered me unto thee had the greater sin i'll read it once again and may the lord help us to understand that jesus answered thou couldst have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above this is he's talking to pilot Pontius Pilate Jesus is talking to him Thou couldst have no power at all against me except it be given thee from above Next therefore he that delivered me unto thee had the greater sin this is concerning whom Judas he that committed me into your hands he has done greater sin greater sin that word greater sin so when god looks at our actions compares them what defense do i have what justification do i have before the holy and righteous god how careful i have to be we are serving a holy god let's turn to hebrews chapter 10 28 and 29 hebrews 10 28 and 29 he that despised moses's law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sorer punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy who had trodden under foot the son of god and had counted the blood of the covenant with which he was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despite unto the spirit of grace i'll read it once more he that despised moses's law died without mercy under two or three witnesses that was during the time of the law just two or three witnesses are enough against me nothing else no need for any other evidence just two or three witnesses and you are stoned to death that's the law of this god that's justice justice next is say how or of how much sorer punishment that was just two or three witnesses and stoned to death how much sorer punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy who had trodden under foot the son of god and had counted the blood of the covenant with which he was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despite unto the spirit of grace jehoram he did not commit sin like his father and like his mother god compares old testament how he dealt new testament we in the age of grace how sorer the punishment how careful i have to be how sincere i have to be how humble i have to be because there's someone who is watching me number 2 he has taken it into record number 3 he weighs in the seriousness of the sin Romans chapter 2 verse 5 Romans chapter 2 verse 5 
But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Again, I am reading. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Revelation of the righteous judgment of God and because of my hardness and impenitent heart, I am treasuring up to myself that wrath. Every action, every thought, everything I do, I am a child of God. Purchased by the precious blood of Jesus. And we all realize, I believe, the price that heaven had to pay to deliver us from sin. How careful I have to be. Am I hardening my heart? Am I hardening my heart? The Lord is speaking. Am I still going to harden my heart? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 2. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Here the word says, For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. I don't know why the Lord is speaking in this way. Every sin received just recompense. Here, the third thing that we were meditating is, God recognizes the seriousness of the evil doing. The word is, but not like his father and not like his mother. Next, for he... 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 2. For he put away the image of Baal that his father had made. That's the next thing. Yehoram put away the image of Baal that his father had made and made the people of Israel lust after them. Yehoram removed the image. What does that show? What does that reveal? He removed the image of Baal. But what was the command given to the children of Israel? Exodus 23, 24. Exodus 23, 24. Exodus 23, Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. I'll read this once again. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. The command is not to put away the images, but to utterly break them down. Yehoram. You are showing a kind of repentance. It appears that you are not like your father and mother. But that repentance, what you are showing, is not the real repentance. You need to be harsh, hard with sin. Not soft with sin. You were supposed to destroy, but you have not destroyed them. Why they were supposed, those images were to be destroyed? So that 
they may never attract the people of Israel again. You were supposed to burn all the bridges, deal with sin with an unsparing hand, so that it may not destroy the people of Israel again. You did not do it. You just put them away. That's not true repentance. True repentance is accepting our sin, our mistakes. Not just accepting, forsaking them. Burning all the bridges so that they may not tempt me again. They may no more attract me again. Yehoram, that's not repentance. That's an outward show. That's an outward show. Deep within, there is no regrets. You are doing this with some ulterior objectives. There is something else in your mind, that's why you are doing this repentant show. Next, verse 3, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 3. Nevertheless, he clung to the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. He departed not from them. Verse 3 says, he clung to the sins of Jeroboam. You show repentance, but then you are continuing in sin clung on to the sins of Jeroboam, cleaved unto them. Remove the idols, but cleaving to the sins of Jeroboam. Daniel chapter 4, verse 27. Daniel chapter 4, verse 27. Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. And break off thy sins by righteousness. And thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. If there may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. Again I'll read. Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. And break off thy sins by righteousness. And thy iniquities by showing mercy. The coming of the Lord is so near. And the Lord is speaking to each one of us. Here the Lord is revealing the sins of Jehoram. How God is watching. Number two, he records. Number three, he compares. Number four, he watches our repentance. Number five, Am I still going to continue in that sin? Now we are going to pray and God be willing. Next time, next Sunday, if the Lord wills, we'll be going into the miracle. But before we go into the miracle, the Spirit of the Lord reveals the background. What kind of a person Yehoram is. And the Lord is speaking to us. He is watching me. He is observing me. All my actions. Shall we close our eyes, bow our head and let us meditate on what we have studied till now. Yehoram reigned for 12 years. He began his reign in the 18th year of Yehoshaphat. He did evil in the sight of God but not like his father and mother. He removed the graven images, but did not destroy them. And he clung to the sins of Jeroboam. The coming of the Lord is near. Let's analyze our own life. The Lord is speaking to us. He has observed everything everything that we are doing. 
taken it into account, compares it, he watches my repentance. Am I continuing in my old ways? Hallelujah. Let's speak unto the Lord. Let's talk. Hallelujah. Why is my spiritual life so dry? Why am I not able to meditate on the word? Why is it when I open the Bible, I feel like sleeping? I don't get that concentration. Praying to God is a hard thing for me. Why? I don't enjoy the Christian life. Walking in this path is a struggle. Hallelujah. Can we separate some time if the Lord gives us this week to look at our own life? Is my repentance real? Am I dealing harshly with my sin? Have I burnt all the bridges? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us to edify as the coming of the Lord is near. Let us lead a life that's pleasing unto the Lord. Let us be faithful. Let us be sincere. Let us love Him from the bottom of our heart. Our Lord is holy. Let us in these day, days strive to lead a life that pleases God. May the Lord help us. Let us pray. Father, we praise you and thank you for this beautiful time that you have given us to come once again with our brothers and sisters, with our youths and with our children and with the elders. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful songs. Thank you for helping us to worship you. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. How sore is the punishment of those who trample the blood, the most precious blood. Father, help us to realize our calling. Help us to be aware that you are watching us all the time. Help us to lead a life that's pleasing unto you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your precious blood that's there to wash us white as snow. May others see Christ in and through us, Lord. Help us to get ready for your coming. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, now we pray for all of those who are sick. Lord, you are our healer. Your word says, by your stripes we are healed. We rebuke all sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. We proclaim complete healing. Lord, help each one of us to trust you, to love you, and lead a life that's pleasing unto you. Thank you for hearing our prayers. And Lord, especially now as we are traveling to different parts of the United States and ministering, Lord, we pray that you may guide us, lead us, Wherever we go, Lord, we just want to go where you want us to go. Lead us and the seeds of the word that have been sown. We pray, Lord, it brings forth hundred fourth fruit. Thank you, Lord. We give you all glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. Now may the love of God the Father grace of Son Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us till the coming of our Lord. Amen and amen. May God bless all of you and keep us in your prayers. In the past days, we were in Texas, different places, and then the Lord helped us to minister in Philadelphia. And now we are in 
uh, uh, Ashburn, that's in Virginia, close to Washington, D.C. And God be willing, in the coming weeks, in, the, in this week, we'll be in uh, New, uh, New Jersey, and then Florida, and then New York. Uh, please uphold the ministry in your prayers as we travel wherever the Lord takes us. We may be faithful and share the word as it is. And may the Lord bless all of you. Some prayer requests. It's election time in India. Please pray for a country so that the peace may prevail and may God's name be glorified. Next, we have the youth camp that's in Punjab, India from May 30th till June 2nd. And uh, the camp is in Hindi language alone. And the registrations have started and we had to stop the registration because only 400 uh, youngsters are, we can arrange for only 400 youngsters. So when we opened our registration on the first and second itself, around 300 people uh, have registered. Now just 100 more seats are left. So we'll be opening the registration again on April the 15th. So please pray that God's name is glorified and the youth conference is a real blessing. And may God bless all of you. Keep us in your prayers. Our Lord is coming very soon. Maranatha.